Iowa's offensive lines have not been great over the past four to five years. Maybe some improvement that we saw throughout 2023. Certainly at points, Iowa was able to run the ball more effectively in several games, but the consistency is still not there. Now they get a change at the OC position. But let's not forget, Iowa's head coach, Kirk Ferentz, is known to be an offensive line guru. Well, he'll get a piece back in 2024. I know very polarizing individual, unfortunately, among Iowa fans. We'll talk about Nick DeYoung's return in just a second. But first, I want to thank Iowa Floor Covering. If you need help with flooring, maybe it's tile flooring or carpet, perhaps even a tile shower that you're working on or about to start working on, 515-379-7000. That's 515-379-7000. They're sponsoring the programming here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. They're located right down in the metro in Bondurant. Visit iowafloorcovering.com for more information. So Iowa gets the return of Nick DeYoung. He announced here this past week that he'll be returning for his COVID year, his sixth year in the program. And for some reason, certain athletes at Iowa, and this is probably the case at any program, any university, certain athletes become very polarizing, not because of what they do off the field, but because of some of the notorious plays that occur in bigger games, maybe where they don't look so hot. I think a lot of the Nick DeYoung reputation began in the 2021 Big Ten Championship game. And let's be quite frank, Jack Plum, neither Jack Plum nor Nick DeYoung, uh, neither one of those guys looked very good. And they were going up against guys like David Ojabo, Aiden Hutchinson. So going to be hard to look good in that game. And I'm not saying Nick DeYoung has had the most picturesque career, but I'm also no old line guru. So I'm not for a minute going to act like I know more about offensive line play than Kirk Ferentz, all right? Now, I've been critical of Kirk for a variety of things. I'm not going to start critiquing who he selects and who he evaluates as it relates to O-line play. It's not going to do that. Now, can we sit here and say there's been a lack of offensive line development, especially since Chris Doyle was dismissed from the program? I think that's fair. I will say this, though. Here's a sixth-year kid, six foot six, 305 pounds. Kirk has talked about the versatility of Nick DeYoung, even though maybe he's not played his best football yet maybe that comes out his sixth year but they've moved him all over the place folks I mean they started him at guard they started him at tackle this is big and I wouldn't be shocked if the reason we saw Nick DeYoung announce his commitment for this sixth season I wouldn't be shocked if the reason is because Iowa wants to know what they have because I would guess that if they're gonna have any open scholarships heading into portal season we're already in the middle of portal season of course Iowa can't really make any moves until they know who they're getting back they're probably going to look at offensive line again. Keep in mind that Dejon Parker came in from Saginaw Valley State, got hurt in the summer, and never really got his footing through fall camp, was dealing with some swelling uh, with a lower leg injury, just never really got going and never broke the rotation. He is out of eligibility unless, unless he somehow has a medical hardship waiver. I'm not aware of any filing for a medical hardship for Dejon. Great young man. I really... Enjoyed talking with Dejan on a couple of different um, opportunities, occasions. But uh, I'm assuming he's moving on and going to probably be a really good individual in the working world. He's got a great attitude and a great mindset, really positive young man. And then they also lose Rusty Feth, who came in, ended up being a starter, came in late in the last cycle from Miami, Ohio. He had been coached by George Barnett when Barnett was at Miami. So those are two key pieces that you are missing and so I just think getting Nick DeYoung back is a lot bigger than people think. And I saw some snarky remarks in social media when the initial announcement was made, which I think is unfortunate. Look, I, I've been critical of players in the past. I was critical of Spencer Petras. I've been critical of Nick DeYoung and Jack Plum and these guys. I just think sometimes fans take this a little bit too far. And look, I'm not telling athletes to stay off social media. They're going to be on social media. And these guys are tough. I mean, believe me, Kirk Ferentz and this program – they build these guys. They get these guys ready for the real world. And so if you're going to make a snarky, nasty comment on social media, I would hope that these guys would be able to handle it. I've had my fair share of uh, nasty comments made toward me based on my opinions on this show, and that's fine. But I just think it's unfortunate some of the comments that were made about Nick Young, especially when he's making an announcement that, hey, I bleed black and gold. I want to be back. This is home. I'm here for a sixth year. And the comments are, ah, why don't you move on? You're trash. You know, just stuff like that. I just don't like it. But anyways, there's my soapbox. I am happy for Nick Young again because of his versatility. He knows the program. And maybe that light will 
flash on. I wouldn't think Iowa would leave this open for him if they didn't really value his role up front. And they do have some young guys that who I think have taken steps forward. Tyler Ellsbury has looked better as his career has went on. Jennings Dunker is a young guy who's been playing a right tackle. Is he more of a natural guard? I don't know. They have young guys like Kale Crow. Haven't heard as much about him. Jack Dotzler has made the depth chart at tackle, but they're going to be some shifting around. Logan Jones should be back for another year at center. And then you bring guys back like Bo Stevens, uh, who was dinged up this past year. So they should be in a pretty good place. It's been a pretty young line. We've been hearing that for a while. Next year, they should be super seniors. You got at least one super senior coming back in Nick DeYoung. Again, I'm not going to pretend to break down his performance. He has not looked good at times in pass protection, but the offensive line as a whole was better at times this year. I think specifically against Wisconsin when they ran the ball effectively, they broke off some big plays, not just against Wisconsin, but against Purdue, against Iowa State on the road. You've got to give guys like Nick DeYoung and whoever's up front credit. Perhaps the light is starting to flicker on in some cases, but to me, if Kirk Ferentz, an offensive line guy and head coach here, wants a guy like Nick Young back for a sixth year and they're able to get him back, kudos to them because they got some issues up front that I think is more likely to be solved by experience and repetition. Not to sound like Kirk Ferentz in this case, but experience and repetition more than going out and grabbing transfers. As much as I liked Dejon Parker, you know, he came in and dealt with some injuries and it just didn't work out. And yet you have a guy like this who understands the system, understand what Iowa wants. I'm sure the offensive coordinator, whoever that is coming in next year, that should help the cause with a lot of things with the run game and with pass protection. So let's just be happy that Iowa's got an experienced guy coming back and by all accounts, a good young man who's going to get an extra a year of education uh, involved as well. I know some people think he's taken up a scholarship. Well, he is taking up a scholarship. But again, just think about the leadership. I know what we see on Saturdays is what we see, but there's leadership off the field and uh, a lot of young people around Nick DeYoung, and hopefully he steps into a kind of a vocal leader role up front, assuming everybody else comes back. And I think they've got a good chance of basically bringing everybody else back, with the exceptions being Dejon Parker and Rusty Feth. So congratulations to Nick DeYoung. He is not the enemy of the state, all right? He's not. Congratulations to Nick, and uh, it will help build that line, hopefully for the better. I continue to put trust Pretty decent degree of trust, whether it's with George Barnett moving forward or someone else. I have some significant level of trust in those guys. Appreciate you tuning in for another segment here from the Hawkeye of the Storm. We've got our National Signing Day live special tomorrow afternoon. A number of recruits, signees, Iowa football signees coming on, jumping on the show tomorrow afternoon. That's Wednesday, December 20th from 1 to about 5 p.m. Central Time. Join me live right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm.